dear friend, Dr. Volko, a very warm welcome to all of you. Where corruption starts, states begin to fail. It entails a continuous process that undermines the structures of the state and the legal system in particular. Corruption is, by definition, something that strikes at the rule of law. And this is a fundamental threat to society in general and to the economic life in particular. This happens in two principal ways. On the one hand, it destroys the foundation of the peaceful coexistence of citizens by creating increased inequality. And in doing so, it generates a sense of frustration among those who lose out through the advantages gained unfairly by the corrupt. On the other hand, corruption also takes away the ability for the economy to function equitably. In the long run, corruption leads to a paralysis of economic life. It has a corrosive effect on the readiness of economic agents to invest. It reduces productivity, job opportunities, and eventually the rate of economic growth. The word corruptions comes from the Latin corrumpere, which means in its primary sense to break in pieces, and hence to spoil or destroy. The definition that the world corruption has come to acquire in the modern world is a misuse of public power or public trust for private means. Nor is it confined to officers of the state. Not only can public officials commit crimes of corruption, but so too can CEOs or managers of NGOs who are also the custodians of a different form of public trust. Corruption exists in all fields of human endeavor. In traditional societies, transactions are based on relationships and favors. Modern market economies should and mostly do function on the rule of law. where private favors are not allowed to interfere with economic interactions. Corruption threatens to send a modern society back to the habits of a traditional one. The rule of law is one of the most precious qualities of free modern societies. Without the rule of law, there is no order, and nothing is predictable as you can't rely on anything. Order is the place where the behavior of the world matches our expectations. It is the place where the often invisible axioms you live by organize your experience and your actions so that what should happen does happen. This is a fundamental requirement for a well-ordered economic life. The rule of law is essential for the liberal organization of an economy. Good companies who won't take on responsibilities need appropriately reliable framework condition in which to work. These framework conditions can only be provided by the law. Nevertheless, we should be aware that laws have an organic nature. They are changing constantly developing and adapting. This is an important characteristic. The functioning of law requires its social acceptance. If rules are too rigid or don't make sense, they won't be accepted, they will be circumvented. This organic nature is reflected in a very strange phenomenon. Small scales corruption can paradoxically, be invigorating for economic life. It is a fine line between order and chaos. But exactly on the border between the two, life as well as economic life 
reveals itself as intense and fruitful. But please don't misunderstand. As soon as corruption exceeds the low level, it has a clear negative correlation with economic growth. In 2012, Convoke discussed the subject of corruption within the overall um, context of breaking the law as a collective. Corruption is a severe form of breaking the law. A person who is open to corruption distances himself from the rule of law. The following example demonstrates the global extent of corruption in the contemporary world. The International Monetary Fund estimates the annual cost of bribery, which only accounts for part of all types of corruptions, at 2 trillion US dollars, the equivalent of 2% of the global GDP. Corruption exists in every country and affects society deeply. It is a huge misconception to think that European states are exempted. Of course, the intensity in each country varies. If we look at the world map, we can roughly state that the corruption of Southeast Asia and India is in a class of its own. In Europe, you have a remarkable upwards gradient of corruption indexed between the Scandinavian countries and Switzerland on the one hand, and the countries towards the east and the south on the other hand. And interestingly, it's the same gradient in the average income in these economies. The lower the average household income, the higher the level of perceived corruption. In other words, as some commentators have observed, the more traditional the society is, the more the rule of law diminishes. Let's take Italy as an example. There exist, as is well known, several organized crime syndicates. The mafia in Italy is powerful. That is a sign that traditional structures are still in place. Taking advantage of the decade-long economic crisis in Italy, its organized crime syndicates have infiltrated the entire food chain, from farming to production and to distribution. Italy is the third biggest agricultural power in Europe. This has become a highly lucrative income source for the criminal cartels. According to the Rome-based think tank, the Observatory of Crime in Agriculture, it is more profitable than the drug market, drug market, but much less dangerous. In a globalized world and industry that we are facing today, the mafia's reach extends beyond Italy's borders and is affecting the path of food to dinner tables around the world. Corruption as a type of lawbreaking can be reduced. But as soon as you stop your effort, it comes back. Corruption knows no borders. So all of us have to work collectively. One can state that the larger the number of people who break the law, the more lacking in scruples the individual becomes. For example, if everyone evades taxes or is on the phone while driving, we can all feel excused. The cooperation between civil society organizations, the state and private sector is essential in the fight against corruption. Peter Eigen from Transparency International calls it the magic triangle for fighting corruption. Lately, we have recognized that something as obvious as democracy requires continuous vigilance. It is in no way an irreversible achievement. The same is true for the rule of law. 
It also needs ongoing attention and awareness to make sure that what has been achieved is maintained. The judiciary system guarantees the functioning of the rule of law. Therefore, the most harmful kind of corruption to economic development is the one of the judiciary system. Or the corruption of the institutions which are supposed to punish the free riders. Because if it's a well-known fact that cheating is a daily routine, economic players are not interested to invest. It ruins the reputation of a country as it takes away trust as a basis. In a conversation at the Convoco Forum between Alex Karp, the founder of Palantir, and Stefan Oschmann, the CEO of Merck, the latter said that the actual crisis of capitalism is that people don't trust the system anymore. As for national governments, for example, a Eurobarometer study from 2016 showed that there is a severe lack of trust. 64% of Europeans tend not to trust their governments. 64%. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the role of trust for our society? There is a relation between trust among citizens and the economic well-being of a state. It is proven that if there is a default of interpersonal trust, this has a negative impact on the productivity and the GDP. Economy runs on trust. Trust is the currency. The only nat true natural resource is intrapersonal trust. The stability of the material things is more dependent on the integrity of the spirit as vice versa. Let's take eBay as an example. eBay's economic model works only by trust. You sell something telling the truth about the good and your counterpart trusts you and pays the agreed price. At the beginning of eBay, there was a possibility to insure these transactions for a surcharge of 10%. These insurances became needless. There was no cheating on eBay. Trust ruled the game. This trust activated that capital as goods which were unsellable before became now part of the economic cycle, economic growth was created. To trust somebody, once your eyes are open, is an act of courage, not of naivety. If you open your hand, you will meet the best part in the other person. Trust in our economy, in our political system, can be created through transparency, which is based upon the rule of law. Transparency, in turn, is the most important factor in the fight against corruption. Every effort of reducing this transparency, for instance, by campaigns against whistleblowers, is something that should let alarm bells ring. People are aware that corruption is a threat to our social and economic life. A poll by the Opinion Research Institute Gallup showed that people consider corruption as the number one problem in today's world. Not climate change, nor overpopulation, as one might expect. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to welcome tonight Jean Hagen. Jean Hagen is currently visiting fellow at Exeter College at Oxford University. Until September this year, he was general counsel of the International Monetary Fund and the director of the legal department. The IMF is one of the most influential global institutions today. 
institutions fulfill a key function in society. They limit the arbitrariness of individual actions. Institutions represent two virtues which individuals often lack. First, they combine a long-term purpose with the notion of the common good. They can learn from the experience of many and incorporate them. And second, institutions cause human action to be considered and reflected <coughs> upon. And thus exercise an educational influence on their members. In our modern world, they are the best way to give the long-term perspective a chance. Especially today, where problems concern international community as a whole, institutions with global reach are vital. The IMF is one of these. 189 countries are part of it. It was laid out at the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944. Its primary purpose is to ensure the stability of the macroeconomic and international monetary system. Among other targets, the reduction of poverty around the world and the fight against corruption are core concerns. Jean Hagen led the IMF's recent overhaul of its approach to addressing corruption. I'm delighted to welcome you, Jean. Thank you very much for being here tonight.